Josh. Thank you, Beer Zerker. All right, here we go. The Ithaca Model 37 has a very strange history. It's the most patient shotgun ever. And I'm going to explain to you exactly what the hell that means. But first, let's just take a look at this one. Mine is a 1949. It's, uh, they started making this thing in 37, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they still make it today. So, uh, it's, that's a pretty long, uh, lineage. Um, I like these 40 ones. Uh, these ones from the 40s are nice. It's, it's a, per in my opinion, it's a, a perfect spot. I, I've seen a million of these things. And, you know, like, they, um, there seems to be a, a huge glut of these things hit the market. I don't know where the hell they came from. You know how, like, with the mill stirrup stuff, sometimes all of a sudden, bang, something becomes available, like some huge cache of something, you know, gets released or something like that? It's almost like that's what happened with these things. Like, all of a sudden, they just hit the gun show market and gun stores. You'd go in, there'd be, like, nine of these in a row on the rack, you know? All different years, all different types of configurations, some of them were trap guns, some of them had shorter barrels, some of them had these adjustable chokes up here that you turn, you know what I mean? I know you know what I'm talking about, you've seen them. And where the hell they come from, all of a sudden, just they just all hit the market like that. Odd. It's almost like there was just a, a huge collection of them or something that was just uh, uh, unleashed. But uh, I had gotten this one before that, and I kind of always liked these, uh, these 40s ones, where it just always seemed uh, perfect. Um, so this one is uh, two and three quarter inch shells and uh, 30 inch full choke barrels. It's basically, you know, your sporting shotgun. You could do some traps, some skeet. You could do a little hunting with it. These Phillips head screws are interesting. When I got it, I was like, oh, look, somebody put Phillips head screws in here. This says Ithaca, so I knew it was the right butt plate. But I thought somebody just stuck Phillips screws in here because I've never seen that, especially on something that's old. And uh, when I looked at others at a gun show, I was like, how do you like that? And even here, is Phillips here? I was really surprised to see that they were uh, Phillips. But uh, they all have this uh, same neat little, I got some weird lighting going on here. What's, what is going on? You know what, let me, ki let me kill that. That might help. Yeah, there we go. That's a interesting design on there, right? So there's a little uh, cross button safety here. Here's the uh, slide release, very 870-ish. And uh, it's a corn cob fore end. It's interesting. This is um, this uh, screws in like this this way to release the barrel. There's a a nub that sticks out into here and then you're able to turn the barrel and take it off. This is how it comes apart. Wow, that that barrel's going on forever. Nice uh, brass bead here that you can polish. And uh, let's take a look at the other side. I knew this was the one when I uh, saw it. When I found it, I was like, you know, I don't want anything weird on it. Single action bar, but uh, these things are like light as hell, so they're actually called feather lights or something. And um, because they're so light, it's uh, the action is just so incredibly light feeling, also and smooth. It just doesn't even feel like it needs dual action bars. But in case you haven't noticed, there's no ejection port on here, right? So it's kind of like Remington Model 10-ish, and uh, we're going to get into that. Um, let's, uh, you know, I got some snap caps here that will cycle through it, but that's, let's do that a little later. Let's get into the history a little bit now that you took a look at it. Let me prop it up a little bit with one of these shells so that that glare goes away. So, uh, here's the craziest history ever of a company. Um that's putting together a firearm. This thing initially starts as a Remington uh, design uh, that they purchased from Mr. John Browning, of course. So here's the original patent, 1915, okay? That's the original patent. John Browning was a big fan of 
Pedersen. You know, Pedersen, we've done the Model 10 before. It was a Remington. Same thing, bottom ejecting, bottom loading. And uh, Browning wasn't really like a competitor. Browning was kind of closing in on, you know, towards the end of his career. You know what I mean? And meanwhile, Pedersen was just starting. You know, He was the young, new guy with all the cool ideas and forward thinking. And, and uh, Browning, um, don't get me wrong, had a lot left in him. But, you know, definitely understood that... Uh, he was the new school of firearms designers coming along, and Browning really respected him. And he actually uh, said that one day that he was the, uh, you know, he's quoted as saying that he thought Pedersen was the best gun designer ever. So he had a lot of respect for him, and he, he wanted to design a bottom-loading, bottom-ejecting shotgun also. He's like, I'm going to take a crack at this, and he, he did. He designed the Remington Model 17. It was patented in 15. And like Remington, most of their guns kind of ran that way. It was the patent, you know, it would, it would be like numbers would be off. Like this, something was patented in, the, in 1915 would be called the Model 17. But what happened around that time, of course, was World War I. So that, that came right in there and just screwed up everything. Um, as far as gun manufacturing, uh, that put a halt on everything. So they couldn't start manufacturers, manufacturing it until 21. And before production began, I guess for those years, um, Browning and Pedersen get to like, you know, look it over and they talk about things and just from years of it just kind of sitting on the, on the drawing room table, uh, Pedersen makes some some changes he patents a couple of little things himself and uh and him and john browning make some changes it's kind of like a collaboration you know not really a competitive thing like a collaboration and there's this other guy gh garrison he's got a hand in what's going on as well um so when it comes out in 1921 as the model 17 it comes out as a trim 20 gauge very light um very light shotgun that's how it comes out and uh it's uh you know decently successful and um but the thing about it is that remington really wants to compete with winchester right and winchester has the model 12 so remington feels like they kind of need something to compete with the model 12 they need something that's like the model 12 to compete with it you know what i mean so they change the um, design of the Model 17 up a bit that it's uh, side ejecting and um, it's uh, it's it to compete with the Model 12, right? So this 31, all right, I'm not going to get into that too much. This isn't a video on the Remington Model 31, so I don't want to talk about it too much, but um the the model the model tw uh, thirty one eventually that was like the father of the Mossberg five hundred and the Remington eight seventy which we just recently did videos on or whatever so that's kind of like the that was the cornerstone where the five hundred the, the the Mossberg five hundred and the and the Remington eight seventy branched off of the thirty one so that's how the history of the of the 870 and the Mossberg 500 could both kind of be traced back to this original design. Um, if not this exact, you know, the Ithaca gun. See, we have it still have, and you're like, what does this all have to do with Ithaca? Well, this is how crazy this gets. So we're going to just put it in reverse a little bit now and back up. Forget about that 31. I just wanted to kind of tell you where things headed with the Remington Model 17. Because the, the 17 turned into the the Model 31. Um, also, this Ithaca was birthed from it. The Ithaca 37. Also, the Browning BPS, which is another bottom-loading pump shotgun from Browning. So anyway, um, in 1921, uh, the Remington Model 17 comes out. Okay, so now here's where Ithaca comes in. So Ithaca wants to be competitive in this market with Remington and Winchester, but 
don't really have anything on the table themselves. Or if they do, I mean, they might have designs there or anything like that, but they're smart enough to look at everything and know and say, like, this Winchester Model 12 is a monster. The, this Reming, this Browning design that Pedersen is stepping in to help out over this Model 17, this thing, another monster. So we have an opportunity here to take a little bit of advantage. And apparently the patents for these things run out in about 15 years. So since Browning patented this thing in 15, and it was supposed to come out in 17, and then the war came and it, nothing happened until 21, it's not like this thing came out in 15, you know what I mean, when he patented it. It didn't really come out until 21 and really start to become popular for even another year or so. Like that, you know, so um, uh, Ithaca looks at it as an opportunity. They're like, you know what, if we just wait this out till this patent expires, you know what I mean? In, uh, in 1931, we can start cranking these things out. So let's just, let's just design our own uh, using this design. And uh, we'll just, uh, you know, we'll just kick into the market in 1931 with, a, with, a, with this same exact shotgun. So they took the Remington 17 as a model. They made some modifications. You can't just, like, you know, completely rip it off, right? You have to, like, do something. So they uh, have one of their designers, Harry Howland. Okay, he works on alterations of the firing pin and the ejection mechanism. Good stuff. And it's not like, you know, hokey changes. He does some good work, you know what I mean, um, with, uh, with those things. And uh, now in 1931, they're ready to roll. And then they hear from, like, their lawyers or whatever. They're like, no, actually, remember back when Pedersen stepped in, like, after World War I and made some changes with Browning? And patented those changes. Well, that's the news that came to Ithaca. Is like, guess what? Um, you're gonna have to wait until 1937 because that's when the patents, Pedersen's patents, expire from the changes that he made. So it's good that Browning and him did that little collaboration after World War One because that kind of stuck a wrench in Ithaca's works there. But they were not going to be hampered by that they're like okay we'll just wait until 1937 then and then boop there you go 1937 is when it got released as the ithaca 1937 there you go and uh you know with the depression like hanging there and everything like you couldn't come out with like a sporting shotgun at a worse time you know what i mean and um and also right before World War II, you know what I mean? So, again, this thing kind of just, this design kind of just sat, and they released it as the Model 37, but they got squashed by the Depression, the, uh, it's the, I think it, it was the post-Depression era, but still, and, and World War II, so that kind of screwed everything up, so they had to really wait until after World War II, they made some, like, actually for the war effort and other things, 1911 pistols, M3 submachine guns. They made stuff, and they made the shotgun for the war, but uh, didn't really start producing these kind, like these, uh, um, you know, sporting shotguns until after the war, which is why I love these late 40s ones so much, because it's kind of like almost like from the beginning, you know what I mean? Even though 1915 was when the patent was originally put on paper for this thing. Ithaca comes out with it in the late 40s, basically, is when these things really started hitting the streets. So that's an amazing history to it. It's just an, just an odd thing, you know what I mean? Now, if the shotgun was, like, horrible, you'd be like, you know, yeah, that's all just part of the story of, like, what a horror it is. But uh, they actually turned out to be, I gotta be honest with you, this is the smoothest shotgun ever. I know you hear like the, you, people talk about all different kinds of shotguns and they're always saying, oh, the action is so smooth. Oh, this action is so beautiful. I'm telling you that this is the smoothest, most easy to operate. Look, pinky. 
you could see the amount of effort I have to use here to get these rounds in. Nothing. And even upside down. Watch how this thing is cycle. Even upside down. Ambidextrous, of course, because it loads and ejects out the bottom. Um, in this position, when you're loading, it's so easy to throw them in. You know how shotguns can be a pain in the ass. That you're going to push rounds in, they push back, they have the lifter here. That it's just there. They could just be a, an, an annoying. And then uh, ejecting, they never really seem to eject sometimes with much authority. Look at this thing. I can't even. Let me back up a bit. Can I back up a bit? Will you let me back up a bit? Whoa. Look at the energy that this thing chucks him out with. And the amount of force I'm using on the slide is like nothing. And like I'm telling you, you want to talk about like quick loading. You could slap him in here. You could use your pinky. Even. I'm using my pinky to push him in like that. That's that's how, how little energy you need to use. To... It's definitely most butter smooth uh, pump action that you'll ever feel. And I felt the newer ones, newer. So I want to talk about like, you know, into the 60s and 70s and stuff like that. There's something different. I don't know what it is. Somebody that really knows these really well would, would maybe know, or maybe it's just that these just have so many years on them that they just smooth out like that or whatever. But trust me, if you, if you have an option... To look at a gun show and there's like a million of these laying because I see sometimes racks and just a whole bunch in a row. Definitely pay attention to them, feel them, cycle them, cycle them slowly, you know. And really, if you if you look, you're gonna find one that feels like that, like that feels like a, you know a million bucks, and that's what you're looking for. And uh, real solid lock up with these. Let's check the uh, trigger reset like we're doing, Kelly. We should. Oh, did it even reset? It didn't. What happened there? I think the trigger. Oh, maybe the safety's on. Oh, I'm just unsure what happened there. Let's try that again. Boom, boom, boom. Because I'm, I know, because I'm cycling it with uh, the trigger pulled. That wouldn't be how to do it. It would be to go bang. I'm not exactly sure what the hell's going on. <laughs> Why would, okay. okay. What would happen in real life here? Okay. In real life, you would cycle the action and you would pull the trigger. Then yeah, it doesn't reset. It doesn't reset until you pump the action and you have to let go of the trigger. Oh, it's slam fire. It's slam fire. That's why it's doing that. It's slam fire. So yeah. The uh by the way, guys, the Ithaca model 37 is uh slam fire shotgun. I realize now I've done shotguns before and I never really pay attention to that. Did I ever even mention that before? That's something everybody loves so much. That should be on the forefront of my video. But yeah, see, I was going to just check to see how the trigger reset, and I'm realizing while I'm pumping it and it's not it's it's not reset. Why is the trigger not resetting? It is. It's as soon as I'm closing the uh, slide, it's firing again. So uh, to top it all off, if it wasn't awesome enough already. It's uh, also slam fire, which people seem to really love. So that's the Ithaca Model 37. Uh, it's a John Browning design with a little bit of Pedersen, a little bit of uh, Harry Howland, and uh, also a little bit of uh, G.H. Garrison, and uh, who knows what else, but uh, what a collaboration to... Uh, finally come out with the uh, most patient shotgun design ever so uh thanks to beer zerker for the uh the music take a look at the beer zerker Edian channel and uh hang around guys got some cool stuff on the way thanks for tuning in and see you all later
music. Ah. <laughs>